Hi, my name's Lizzie, and I'm going to be talking about the recorder today. Show you a couple of um, extended techniques and talk a bit about um, actually composing for the recorder. So most people think of the recorder as a school instrument, um, but it is actually a really versatile instrument in its own right. It has a much larger repertoire than many other woodwind instruments, such as the, the clarinet or the saxophone. So um, recorder repertoire stretches all the way from the medieval period up to the present day. So you can find the recorder playing medieval and renaissance folk dances, um, in baroque operas, baroque trio sonatas, that kind of thing. Benjamin Breton also writes for the recorder quite a lot. Um, it's a big contemporary music repertoire for the recorder. Also appears in film scores, so if you have a listen to the soundtrack for some of the Harry Potter films, you might spot some recorders in there. And it can even be used in jazz, so it's a really, really versatile instrument. Recorders come in all sorts of sorts of shapes and sizes, um, but I'm going to talk to you about some of the main ones that you might come across. So probably the most common ones, their names correspond to the voice parts in a choir. So we have the soprano recorder, which is sometimes also called the desk count recorder. This is probably the one you'll have played at school. Next is the alto recorder, so you can see this is a bit bigger, it's sometimes also called the treble. Then we have the tenor recorder. And finally, the bass recorder. There are also smaller and larger instruments than this, and also a whole range of sizes in between all of those, but those are probably the main ones you'll come across. Um, so, I've got here... The sopranino recorder, which is even smaller than your soprano. And then this tiny one is the gark line, so that's half as big as your soprano. There's also bigger bass sizes, so after we have the bass, there's um, the great bass, the contrabass, and even subcontrabass. But unfortunately I don't have any of those to show you. So while the recorder does only have about a two octave, two and a half octave range, um, we can compensate for this by using different combinations of instruments and swapping between them when we need to. So because the recorder has a really simple design, there's no keys, um, no reed or anything to get in the way of producing the sound, we can make a lot of different sounds that other woodwind instruments just can't do. So one of the strengths of the recorder is articulation, so we can do different types of double tonguing. Different strength articulation. And even using different consonants to produce the sound. Um, another thing we can do really well because there's no keys uh, is sliding between notes. Also making microtones. So with quarter tones you can always get the whole scale of the instrument. Another thing we can do is finger vibrato, which is kind of like a microtonal trill. So by adding an extra finger you can change the pitch a little bit. that sounds quite similar to that can be actually covering the windway here with your other hand. Which can also be a nice effect. One way of changing the sound of the recorder is by leaking air around the mouthpiece when you play. So this can either be done um, by blowing across the top or holding your recorder to the side. Just to give it that airy kind of
kind of sound. Another thing we can do on the recorder is play multiphonics, so that's where we're actually hitting two overtones, or more even, at once. Actual pitches of the multiphonics can vary from instrument to instrument, so if there's a specific pitch you want in your piece, uh, it might be worth writing the bottom note and just putting multiphonic and letting the player choose the fingering that works for them and their instrument. Um, exploring overtones can also be really effective on bigger instruments, so you can move between the different um, overtones. <laughs> which can be very effective when paired with um, Tony. Kind of cool sounds like that. Another thing we can do is um, actually singing and playing at the same time. So that can be singing the same thing as you're playing, something completely different, or providing a drone can also be quite effective. Another thing we can do is playing two recorders at the same time. So this can be two of the same size recorder, or two different sizes. So again, that can be providing a drone or something completely different in each hand. Uh, it's worth noting if you choose two different size recorders, even if you're doing the same fingering in each hand, you'll get different notes. So, so if you do want to notate any of these extended techniques that I've been talking about, um, there's not really a standard way of notating quite a lot of them. So what can be useful is to either, if it's short direction, just write it on the score, or actually make a table of different symbols you're going to use at the front of your piece. So here are some examples of that. If you want to add another recorder or percussion, singing um, for one player, it's probably best to add that on a separate stave. So here's an example with two staves. Um, and this one actually uses four staves, so you've got the voice, the recorder, um, tapping on the recorder with a ring to create this percussive effect, and also stamping your feet. So there's four different lines here, um, which can make it a bit tricky to sight read, but it is a lot clearer and shows what you want instead of using all different symbols. Um, I think the most common mistakes when people are writing recorder come from just not considering how the instrument works. So first of all, it's a woodwind instrument and your player is going to need some time to breathe. So that's something to think about, um, just giving them enough time to breathe. Obviously the bigger instruments tend to use up more air, so you might need to add more spaces for them to breathe if you're asking them to play a bass or even bigger instruments. Another thing to consider when writing for a recorder is just the logistics. If you need your player to pick up another instrument or swap instruments during the piece, you'll need to leave them time for that. Another thing which comes up a lot when writing for a recorder is dynamics. Unlike other woodwind instruments, we can't create different dynamics just by blowing harder or softer because that affects the pitch and the tuning. What we can do instead is create different levels of intensity by using vibrato, using alternative fingerings, varying our articulation. So it's still helpful to have those um, dynamic symbols in music, just don't expect quite the same range of BPP P, P to FF that you would get on, for example, a clarinet or a different instrument. It's also worth noting that um, the higher notes on the recorder will naturally sound louder, so considering the range you're writing in is also a good idea.